Hey my friends, welcome to today's video and I'm sorry my Zwift Racing League friends, I've got nothing for all y'all today. Um, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time and that is to share my cycling experience as a complete beginner for the past year. So one of the videos that I uploaded in 2022, um, 300 watts FTP in 10 months has received quite a fair bit of attention. And I thought that it might be useful to also share my experience of reaching that milestone and perhaps um, what I'm up to right now. I'm 34 this year. I'm 182 cm tall and weigh about 79 to 80 kilos right now. So I know that um, reaching the 300 watts FTP is a milestone for a lot of cyclists and I just want to say that I probably have my work cut out for me for a couple of reasons. So firstly, I'm heavy. That means naturally um, every downstroke is heavier as well. So um, secondly, I'm not off the couch. So I've been doing ball sports for the past 20 last years and I've represented my schools at all levels and I've also been lifting weights in recent years so I think all this attributed to and springboard my growth when I turned to cycling. Because I've been tracking and documenting my progress for the past year as a beginning cyclist um, it will be easier for me to share my progress chronologically using the RAM tests that I have taken so far. So I've taken 5 RAM tests and this is what they look like. My first Strava activity was on 9th September 2021 and I subscribed to Zwift in November 2021. So the first RAM test gave me an estimated FTP of 232 watts and right after that I started the Build Me Up program on Zwift. So this was when I became acquainted with cycling. So before the program I was very uncomfortable with this new sport that I just picked up. I was struggling to spin continuously and for a prolonged period and therefore find myself freewheeling quite very often because of that. I also have a limited range of cadence that I'm comfortable pedaling in. Um, specifically, I like to spin at about 75 to 80 RPM, making use of my thighs to just grind it through. Um, with the help of the trainer bike's ERG mode, I had no choice but to continuously spin for hours the program also forced me to spin at different cadences. So at the end of the program, not only did my FTP increase to 274 watts, but also, I also became very comfortable with spinning non-stop and also have expanded my range of cadence. So these fundamental attributes are crucial to how I approach training rides and races today. Um, and during this period, I was cycling at about five to seven hours every week. Four months after the previous test, I took another RAM test which gave me an estimated FTP of 300 watts, the magical number. In June, um, I ditched all the threshold work that I've been doing in favor of VO2 max intervals. Specifically, I was doing quite a lot of um, 5x5 intervals and riding with the Korean Zwift Riders group, the B group, and then spending the rest of my time in zone 2. So I think throwing the VO2 max intervals really pushed the limits of my aerobic um, system. At that point of time, I was still very much a beginner, so my body was just adapting to anything and everything I was throwing at it. So I continued this pattern for a few months before I turned my focus to my critical powers. And during this period, I was cycling for about 8 to 10 hours per week. This period was also the Zwift Racing League period 
in my one year cycling journey. So I joined a recreational e-sport team, the coalition, and started to race with them. Um, and this was a complete eye-opener for me because racing events like the Dirt Racing Series and the Zwift Racing League uh, made a noob like me realize that um, there are other aspects of cycling beyond the FTP. So I started to turn my attention to my critical powers and recovery in between efforts to help improve my performance in this series. I work on my sprints after a long zone 2 session for example. I would go to Richmond to work on my 1-2 to two minutes power via Libby Hill for example. And while I was trying to fix the other aspects of my game, the upper limit of my aerobic threshold kind of stagnated. Um, I did another RAM test at the end of the year and I didn't see much improvement. I got 307 watts from the test even though I was toast at about the 420 watts mark. It should have been about 300 watts but I think the power must have spiked kind of irregular while I was struggling towards the end and the ERG mode just wasn't fast enough to adapt so it captured uh, more watts output. Um, during this period, what started as a program became a lifestyle and I was able to, I was doing about 10 to 12 hours of cycling per week. So this result gave me a bit of a shock because I thought I had improved quite a fair bit. Um, I was breaking records across my critical powers but it seemed like the upper limit of my aerobic system stagnated. So hence, I quickly reintroduced um, the intervals at the start of 2023. I struggled in the beginning because I haven't been at it for quite a while. Um, however, after a few sessions, I began to feel good again. Um, so much so that I felt that the prescribed intervals had, have been getting just a little easier recently, which prompted me to do another RAM test. So I wanted to do it in much as part of the whole quarterly report kind of thing. But I also booked a vaccine shot during that recovery week, so um, might as well just do it earlier. So this latest test gave me an FTP of 317 watts. And as usual, I decreased it to about 305 watts to help me plan my training. So technically speaking, I could have increased the difficulty of the workouts without doing the test. But since I was trying to document this journey, um, it's actually worthwhile to just do the test so that I can share my progress without it becoming an anecdote. And that's that, my beginner's journey to performance cycling. Um, polarized training, 10 to 12 hours um, a week. 4 is the 1 ratio of zone 2 and high intensity workouts. So big question, can I actually hold my FTP? Um, personally, for me, I'm not a big fan of doing something for the sake of doing something. I'm not, I'm definitely not going to write for an hour just to hold, just to see if I can hold 317 watts, for example. Um, ultimately, it's just a number for me to refer to, to help guide my training, guide my rights, for example. And if the situation calls for it, I'll do my best and see how it goes. Um, so these are the actual numbers that I've gotten from a few of my rides recently. Um, out to Zwift, 50 minutes and 8 seconds, averaging 299 watts in October 2022. And more recently, in February 2023, um, I averaged 304 watts for 34 minutes during a team time trial. And just days ago, I joined a... Cat A group in the Korean Zwift Racing, Korean Zwift Rider Chase Race, averaging 299 watts for 55 minutes. Um, interval sessions at a local hill matched what I could do indoors as well. So I was typically doing like 330 watts to 350 watts for 4 minutes at Mount Faber. And <clears throat> zone 2 sessions are also well within range. I'm currently doing my zone 2 at about 200 to 230 watts. The heart rate's on point, although um, heat, fuel, and hydration can still be a bit of a problem when I'm cycling outside. So these numbers, these are the numbers, and once again, knowing my FTP um, is really helpful to help me plan my training and rides. 
for example, I can look at a route and immediately have a rough estimate of how much power I want to invest or sustain in a ride. In fact, I have a big ride coming at the end of March um, and I can really know how I would want to approach it. Evidently, based on my Zwift Racing League performance so far, I know that my 5 minutes power is kind of subpar. I struggled with um, stages like Rue Mapu and the Chain Chomper. I'm working on it right now, so fingers fingers crossed uh, it will get better. Next going to be my weight. Um, I ride a lot, but I love to eat as well. So it's been matching the calories burned during my workouts. And ultimately, I want to get down to about 76 kilos in the next season. So for now, I will just enjoy training and eating, then perhaps um, slowly bring the weight down before the start of the next season. So I gave up playing ball sports almost completely because it would otherwise make recovery difficult. I also had to put my weight training in maintenance mode for the same reason. And it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy, it's just football and basketball are fun, but there's also um, it's something that really messes with my joints with these high impact sports. So happy to give it up, um, especially with my age. Hmm, I don't have a number or target in mind, but I definitely want to get a lot stronger. And based on how my body is adapting to training so far, I think there's still a lot of growth potential. So I just gotta keep pushing and see how far I can go. Um, next, probably exploring places. Being reasonably, being reasonably fit has also allowed me to explore new places on a bike. Being able to climb while staying in zone 2 makes the mountain less intimidating and trip more enjoyable. I want to be able to just chill and enjoy while I'm climbing at even a faster pace. So fingers crossed, more of that in the coming years as well. So in conclusion, I started cycling in late 2021, subscribed to Zwift, worked on my threshold power in the beginning and currently using the polarized training model as the basis of my cycling regime. So I spend like um, 10 to 12 hours per week on the bike. Um, as a beginner, gains are easy and so long you put the hours and work in, um, definitely going to see improvements. And I'm sorry that this is not one of those get fit fast videos. I've invested um, time, trained hard. I've done my research and stuck to a plan and here I am. So perhaps the progress might or might not have been faster, but I really enjoyed the journey so far. Um, I enjoy being injury free, being fit, being able to compete with individuals who sign up to race week in and week out. So um, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful and um, drop a comment in the comment section if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer. And if I don't have an answer, then perhaps someone can probably chime in uh, to help a fellow cyclist out. So, all right, that's it. Um, I will continue to share everything I've learned in the in future videos. Um, till then, see ya.